up guys, welcome back to Real Talk and welcome to a very hot and sunny UK. I'm all wet, I'm stuffy, oh god it's horrible. I want to address the elephant in the room first of all and like, there's no easy way to really say this. Um, I know I've been infrequent with my uploads and I can only apologise for that and I can only be thankful for the people that are still continuing to support the channel, the people that are still commenting, the people that are still asking, you know, what's going on, like why aren't you uploading, I really appreciate that. Um, and look, there's, there's no easy way to say it. I've struggled a little bit uh, the last few months. I think, you know, we get so caught up in our day-to-day -day lives, I felt like I didn't have to pick me up or drive to do videos or the time to do it. Um, and and that, that's just me being completely honest. Now, fortunately, the comments and the messages that I've had have picked me up massively so. So I just wanted to say, quick, quick note, for those who are suffering mentally, mental health or anything of the sort, feel like you're alone, talk to someone, you know, I'm here if you need me, if you want to drop me a message, I'm more than happy to talk, but it does help. So I'm back in a good place, which is good, which means I can get content out. So I'm really going to make a go out of this because I really want to make something out of it. So I'm pushing for 10k, I'm at eight and a half at the moment. I think we can get to 10k in the next few months, quite easily with your help. So if you are new to the channel, my name's Christian, please, please hit that subscribe button and let's jump straight into the video. My M2, yes, I'm going to be doing a lot more content with other cars as well, but I've actually had the M2 now for a whole year and in that year I've done 20,000 miles so I thought that warrants enough for me to give a proper review an owner's review of what it's like living with an M2 competition and what sort of costs are involved as well because it's good to know especially if you're buying right I spent a lot of time in this car I've done a lot of miles in this car all sorts of driving whether that be on a road or track I think I've got good verdict so I'm just going to talk you through my kind of time my kind of experience with the M2 competition the year that I had it and the 20,000 miles that I've done quite a lot considering that my finance is 6,000 a year anyway doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter wait anyway let's jump in the car let's get talking probably rambling random crap like I normally do but I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you in the car <laughs> so cool in the car as soon as you walk it's like when you get out of the car it's like you know when you're in an airplane and you walk, you, you land in a nice sunny destination and you walk out and you get that heat that's what it's like but when i walk out i get the heat but it smells like cow poo so it's not great before we go driving let's talk about the car m2 competition i've had it a year now i bought the car with 4,000 miles on it I'm now on 24,000 so for those mathematicians I've done 20,000 miles in a year and I've had a lot of time a lot of experiences with the car and I think it's safe to say my kind of verdict for those who have only just got one and things that I recommend that you do to it or people who are looking to get one hopefully this proves helpful because there's a lot of reviews out there on cars you know people have them for a day or two don't really get the full kind of feel for it and what it's actually like living with for such a long time and the costs that are kind of involved in it. So hopefully this video gets to the bottom of that. Really, my recommendations on what I think you should do to the car and what kind of costs are involved with having the car so long and doing 20,000 miles. So first of all, let's start with the main thing, which is costs. I bought the car 4,000 miles. Um, I've done 20,000 since and I bought the car. I actually got it quite cheap. I negotiated with a deal. I got it for 41 grand, which at the time is quite cheap. The bad thing is my PCP is set to uh, 6,000 miles a year. <sighs> I've done basically all of that in one year, but it's been, it's been, it's been good mileage, it's been good mileage. So 20,000 miles, what have I had to do? Like servicing, tires, MOTs if applicable. And I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about that because buying one of these cars, a lot of people think, oh, bloody hell, it's an M performance car. It's a sports car it's probably gonna be very expensive to maintain. I'm happy to report it's probably not as expensive as you think. So miles per gallon, the way that I drive it, um, after going for like a bit of a hoon yesterday as well, um, and then driving normally, I've averaged like 25 miles to the gallon, which is not bad. If you're driving it sensibly, 
and you just leave it in comfort, in auto, you'll probably get mid 30s, possibly high 30s, especially on the motorway. So they're not that bad on fuel when you drive them really, really carefully. But let's be honest, you're buying an M2, you're buying an M car, you're probably not going to drive that carefully. If you do absolutely hoon it, you're talking like low teens. I know for a lot of people who watch this kind of video, maybe coming from like an RS3 to an M2, an M2 competition, you're probably thinking, is it worse than fuel? From my understanding and the people that I've spoken to and my friends, these are slightly worse than fuel than an RS3. So that's the kind of fuel costs involved. So 20,000 miles, what have I had to do in terms of servicing? So bought the car, had it's running in service on time, which is good if you're buying one, make sure that the running in service is done on time. Sometimes, like, you know, people sell, well, yeah, it can really ruin the car. It doesn't massively, but what it will affect is when you go to resell it. So make sure it's done within the specified time. Um, so it had that and it had a service prior to me picking it up. And I've had to do one service since. Now, the servicing is, it was a major service that I've had done. And what I will recommend is if you know a specialist, take it to a specialist. If you don't know a specialist, do a bit of homework and it's probably worth traveling a little bit further out to get it done by a specialist because they are so much cheaper than a dealer and they do so much of a better job because you've seen these horror stories with technicians taking cars out, ragging them around and they don't do anything, they don't look after it. Because if you take it to someone whose general passion is cars themselves and it's their business, they're not going to dick around. They're going to look after your cars. So I would recommend taking it to a specialist. Um, now with servicing, when do you get them done? Generally, B&W are quite good because it pops up with how many miles until you need to do your next service. It's all logged on the iDrive so you can see where you are. What I would recommend is possibly every sort of 10, 15,000 miles every year, make sure you get it done. So I had this car serviced at 20,000 miles. So I'd done about 16,000 before I had it serviced, but I'd done the first service within the first year. I think it was like 10 months. So what did the service consist of and how much did it cost? So major service, one of these. Um, so I'm told, got the invoice here, is the engine oil and filter service, cabin filter service, um, air filter service, spark plug service, full vehicle health check, parts, oil, and labor. If you take it to BMW, we're talking like 900 to a grand there, and I've seen that all the time plastered all over the group. Um, I paid 484 pounds and 91 pence. And if you're wondering where that is, that is at RSV Automotive. Simon, um, honestly, such a gent, such a good guy properly looks after your car, service is exceptional. If you're in the Cheshire area, 100% recommend going to him. I'll put his Instagram up here, so go and drop them a follow. Uh, but yeah, servicing, generally, you're probably talking up to 500 quid, depending on what service you go for. If it's a major one, expect around 500 pounds. If it's like a, just a minor one, probably a couple of hundred quid here and there. I would recommend you get your oil changed quite frequently, especially if you're hooning the car around as well. So I've got a track day next month, and after that, I'm gonna get it serviced again, a couple of hundred quid, but it's definitely worth doing. I've not had to MOT the car because it's a 69 plate. So uh, an MOT, again, look, it's cheap. It's not gonna fail. Vehicle health check was absolutely fine. So I didn't need to do any of that. What about tires? Have I had to replace the tires? And you know, how long do a set of tires last you? Well, that depends on the driver. Uh, for those who know me, I, I, do like to, um, I do like to drive my cars quite hard. So I had my tires changed about four or five months ago. Uh, the original one's done about 15,000 miles, I'd say. No, slightly more than that, about 16, 17,000 miles. The rears were like so bad, uh, illegal really. Um, so I had them changed to Michelin Pilot Sport 4Ss. I've done about 6,000 miles on those and I do need to replace the rears because I do, like I say, drive it quite hard. But whilst we're on the subject of tyres, what I will say is from factory, for those who know these cars, or for those who don't, these cars come with Michelin uh, Super Sports. And they're a good tyre, don't get me wrong. But what I would recommend is if you're buying one and it's only got like a few thousand miles on it or 10,000 miles, it's probably gonna have Super Sports on. I would recommend changing to Pilot Sport 4Ss. Talk night and day. I talk all the time, sorry, about the tires and it does make a massive, massive difference, more than you'd think. And anyone and everyone who's done that has had nothing to say but good things about that change. And for me, it's probably one of the most important things that you can do. You will notice a massive difference with all round performance in all weather scenarios, there is a big, big difference between the PS4S's 
and the Super Sports. Do the change, it makes a massive, massive difference. So what is this car like to drive? So I kind of bought it as a bit of a fun car to drive to work on a sunny day and take it out for a good old track day or a good old hoon. I've probably driven it a lot more than I should have, hence the, the massive mileage. So I've probably used it more as a daily, to be honest. What is it like? Um, to be fair, if you whack it in comfort, it's, it's not a bad car at all. If you're just driving it, plodding along to work, it's a good car. It's comfortable, the seats are absolutely amazing, the way that they hug you, and it's not as hard a ride as you think. Um, so yeah, you could absolutely daily it. You could easily do, uh, you know, and I've easily done four or five hour trips, and I come out and feel absolutely fine. On the flip side, when you go to open it up, it is incredibly capable. And on that kind of subject, what I would say and recommend to anyone, if you consider yourself as a good driver, um, obviously you can't really push a car to its full potential on the road. I would recommend if you're a complete novice or not, if you've got, if you've got an M2 competition or you're looking at getting an M2 competition, I would 100% recommend taking it on track. And for those who have, of course, you, you, you know how good these cars are. I think you'll be overwhelmed and it'll probably uh, over, over, over exceed your expectations. Um, so yeah, definitely take it on track. Get a, um, an instructor out if, you, if you're a complete novice to teach the ropes and, and get the car pushed to the limit because first of all, it's good for you. You get to know your car a little bit better. It helps with obviously your driving as well, but it is so capable, a lot more capable than people think. And I've pushed this, I'd like to say I've pushed it very, very hard. And the last track that I went to with a lot of influencers, they were shocked with how good this car actually was out of the box, like factory, completely stock. If you're looking to get in one, take it on track and, and really give it a good old tune because you'll be blown away with how capable it is. The one thing though that lets pretty much all M cars down is the brakes. They are, they are pretty bad. If you're braking quite hard, normal day-to-day -day driving, like you're going for a good old scenario, right? You're going for quite a, a hard drive with your mates you will notice that your brakes start to fade, depending on how hard. And, well, if you're a sissy, you won't. Uh, if you're driving it hard, you'll know. And people who are watching this video who've got M cars and have taken them on track, you'll know that the stop brakes are pants. So I suppose, where do you draw the line? If you're just dailying it and you drive it hard occasionally, you probably won't have to do anything. If you like to go for a good old tune and you push your car hard, I recommend possibly changing the pads maybe go for a decent fast road setup like some uh well you can go for ebcs like yellow or blue stuff something of the sort but if you're really into your cars and you're into your track days then i would spend a little bit more money on things as you know with this car i've had the brakes changed um i've had the discs done i've gone for proper race pads i've gone for better fluids and i've gone for braided lines and that has made a massive difference last track that i was on i mean i was stamping on the brakes and i got absolutely no brake fade um so yeah, I would recommend changing the brakes if you like to push your car a little bit. If you're just driving it normally and you have it just as a, oh look, I've got an M2 competition, then you don't need to do anything, it's fine. And if you do get the M2 comp with the bigger brakes, I've not really got much experience with those. What I've heard is they are, they are really good. The pads out factory on the stop brakes, not great. Get them changed ASAP. If you wanna have a look at the, the video of me getting my brakes done, they look awesome by the way. They look kind of like ceramic-y. Uh, check out Mosex website as well. Uh, big, big difference, night and day. So, really so far, it's not as expensive as you thought it was to run. Fuel's not as bad as you think. It's quite comfortable. It's so capable on track when you push it and the brakes are crap. <laughs> that's, that's mainly it, right? The annoyances that I have with a car, the box, the DCT box, I wish I'd gone for a manual. The DCT, great when you're really pushing it, but when you're driving around day to day, it's, you know, it's a dual clutch system, right? It's a bit jerky and a bit laggy. And then when you put it into reverse and you put it into drive and go forward, the car rolls for about three days before it picks up. Um, so yeah, it's probably not the best if you're like, if you're maneuvering your car a lot, uh, but when you really open it up, they are great. So it's kind of like yin and yang situation there. What is it like in terms of practicality? Look, there's no lying. If you, for me, my circumstance is perfect. I've not got kids, planning to have kids in the future. Could probably fit them in the back if I cut their legs off. Uh, but if you have got kids, it's probably not the best car. It's not that spacious. Oh, addictive! Um, it's not that spacious. 
Um, you'll struggle to fit four adults in, to be fair, especially if you're like my height, six foot, you struggle a little bit. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's, it's not bad. Fitting stuff in can be a bit of an issue. So I suppose if you're single, you've got a partner, you've not got kids, absolutely great. Um, if you have got kids and you've got a bit of a family wagon, great. If you haven't, if you're looking to have this, it's just your sole car and you've got kids, prop, no, it's not gonna work. I'd go for something bigger like an M3 competition, similar sort of price to be fair. Been on holiday recently with three suitcases. I, I couldn't fit all three of them in the boot. Um, and then obviously you have to put one in your seats and you don't like doing that because it scuffs the leather. And if you're anal like me, not, not if you like it, if you are anal. It's a stunning looking car. It's so customizable in terms of visually and the modifications that you can do. There's so many companies that will help you achieve your desired look as well. To conclude, it's a good looking car. It's not as expensive as you'd think it is to run. It's uh, it's okay in terms of how economical it is for an M car, considering the power that it has, 420 odd brake horsepower, three liter, straight six. It's not that bad. Um, it goes like stink. It's reliable. I've had no issues with it at all. It's a comfortable car when you want to drive it normally, and it is ridiculous when you're pushing it hard, and it's so capable. The only bad thing that I have to say about it is it's not practical. It really isn't, depending on your kind of lifestyle. And the brakes out the box, as well as the tyres that you get stuck, are, are, aren't the greatest. The brakes in particular, terrible, absolutely terrible. The biggest thing, actually, that I've not mentioned is your mirrors, and I'll put a little screen thing now, is when they fold in, they actually scuff the paint. That's pissed me off a bit, not gonna lie. That has pissed me off. But other than that, I actually have nothing bad to say about the car. It rides a little bit high, it looks a little bit high, but that can be changed. Looks a bit like a tractor. But it doesn't, it's, the way that it feels when you drive it, it's just honestly. So guys, if you've not got one already, just go and get one. And if you have got one, go and take it on track. Go and have some fun in it and see what it's all about because you'll absolutely love it. So hopefully this video's been insightful. Nice sideways action. Hopefully this video has been insightful. Hopefully it's gonna decide and make the decision that you should just go and get one because they're awesome, man. They're awesome. The sound is a bit bad, I know that, but we can change that for big money. But oh, I love it, I love it. And it's like, what do you go for next? And I've, I've covered this before. You have to spend some serious money to, to, to upgrade from this car. It's so good out of the box. Absolutely love it, happy with it. And I'm gonna start modding it as well. But thank you guys and We'll jump out of the car and we'll close off the video.